I think it's recording. Okay, I think we're good to go, and we'll just put this in double. Is the light good? Can you, yeah, I think you can yeah. see me good. Yeah. yeah. So we just want to put this in. There we go. Hello, everyone. I'm here with Dr. Dominic Nischwitz, and we're about to talk, uh, uh, have a big conversation about biological dentistry. Dr. Nischwitz is a dentist and naturopath, a world specialist biological dentistry in ceramic implants, and the president of the International Society of Metal Free Implantology. Uh, he's recently published his book, It's All in the Mouth, which was first published in German and now coming out in, or just come out in the US. Don, thanks for joining me. Thank you very much, Stephen, for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Yeah, I've I've been looking to talk to you about this. It's we we share a lot of uh, philosophy on holistic dentistry and your book, um, which it came out a, a while ago uh, in Germany, right? But it's it's recently released in the US. Yes, it came out last year actually in March two thousand nineteen in Germany, and it was published exactly a year later in March, beginning of March this year in the US, kind of like when Corona started. And so, but it, re it just came in to my doorstep, the, the, the English version just came in last week because of probably because of the lockdowns. It took a while because I, when Corona started, I was actually in the US um, presenting on the Ceramic Implant Congress, like the IAOCI US company. And there were a few guys already having it in their hands and I got to signature it, but I never had it myself. So now I'm lucky to be having it. And it's, it's translated in a lot of countries, but I think it's all postponed because of Corona. It's also translated in Chinese, it's translated in French, Canada, in Czech actually. So it's lucky because I didn't self-publish or something. It was not even my idea to write the book. Yeah, congratulations on that. And, you, and you've done a really good job um, because, uh, you know, writing about dentistry isn't easy one because the um the speciality is is obviously something that lay people don't have a lot of access to um but overall you you know you break things down very simply for people and one of the big things is that you come at this with two different specialities and one is from um a, obviously a dentistry speciality but the other is you're actually a, a qualified naturopath as well Yes, in Germany, a naturopath is called a high practical. I'm both a functional medicine doctor and biological dentist special. And exactly, yes, the book, the idea was to write it for the layman because the, this just the information needs to come out that health actually starts in your mouth and not just further down in the gut or whatever. This is the entrance to everything. In biological dentistry, the approach, the approach we do, so we chatted a bit over the last two years already, Stephen and me. and the approach is more like how I see it is it's a overlap of functional medicine, health optimization or biohacking for the cool kids and high tech dentistry. But our goal is not just repairing your teeth and maintenance like conventional dentists most of the time do. It's more optimal health. How can we restore optimal health? And this means like, yeah, from a longevity point of view, just anti-aging, whatever you want to call it. It's a full body approach, holistic dentistry, whatever. I think we both share a common interest in the nutrition part. And wait a second, I just see it in the back here. See, Back then, when I couldn't tell that I have a book coming out because I signed an NDA in 2016 when they found me that I can't tell, but I found you. Uh, you remember on Instagram, we just chatted on Instagram and I was like, this dude is like on the other side of the country and kind of having the same mindset, at least in terms of nutrition, because this is what all, what started for me 20 years ago, everything about nutrition. So I'm a big fan of Western Prize and of course of um, Stephen's book. And actually also quoted you in my book because it just came earlier for sure. So it's amazing that dentists finally are not just the dentist anymore, like in Hangover or in all sorts of other movies. It's more like if you do, it, if you do the approach consequent, you're, you're having a key part in between integrative medicine or like chronic disease, which is the nowadays epidemic, and like the mouth is like not being part of the body at the moment, kind of. So you're talking about 
leaky mouth lately. I'm always talking about leaky gum, which is first before leaky gut actually. So yeah, I'm quite, it's quite interesting to share our mindsets here because I think we are both having the same. Yeah, I think at that time you were on the west coast of the US. You were in Miami speaking, and I was on the east coast. Oh, sorry, actually, other way around, east coast, and you were um, on the, uh, the, the. I was on the west coast. You were on the east coast, and yeah, we were sharing this very synchronistic um, moment. And and I was kind of really interested in your background, you know, how you got into this, and you know, obviously naturopathy and dentistry don't fit very, you know, very, um, very often. And so what's your background on that? How did that happen? Did you study one before the other or what, what order did that come in? And um, basically I studied dentistry and, but this was just by chance. My, actually my dad is a dentist, but personally I was never interested in what he was doing because for me it just seemed like work. And I wanted to become, I was very athletic and wanted to become a professional skateboarder when I was a kid. So it kind of like when I was at civil service, it was a overnight decision that I just applied to dental school because I thought, okay, I'm very good with my fingers and my hands. So I didn't know what was uni what university was going to be like that I had to learn uh, science in terms of physics, chemistry, biochemistry, and all these things. But actually, when, when I did civil service, I also started... Um, taking care about my overall health. I wanted just to be more athletic, more performance, started to go to the gym. And when you go to the gym, you will initially get introduced to some sort of, some sort of nutrition or diet. Wait, I just, I think I flew out. I just had your... to, sorry. Look, I was just getting some messages from the, the IG uh, video that the audio was doubling up. So look, I oh. can't, yeah, I think it was on my end. So that's cool. We will, um, We'll come back to that. We can do another uh, Instagram video at another time. Yeah, and we get later. Okay, cool. And yes, so luckily I didn't know that I had to learn chemistry and physics and sciences because in school I wasn't interested and I, I, yeah, I thought I'd, I'm just too stupid for these things. But because I was doing all these things for my body in terms of nutrition and supplements and creatine, glutamine and bodybuilding things like to build more muscle, I was interested in all these things. And this is basically chemistry, biochemistry, physics, and kind of like clicked in my brain. And I got interested in this and I was actually very good and found out that my brain thinks like this. So I was just doing all these sorts of health optimization. Now we would call it biohacking things. For me personally, while being in university, but university was just like kind of like, I just did this. It wasn't my purpose at all. So even in the last semester, I was still asking my dad, so I'm not sure about this dentistry thing. Of course, I'm very good with my hands. I can prep good. I'm good with aesthetics, but something was missing. I actually didn't know what it was, but my dad, and I've told this a lot of times because this is kind of like a key moment. He said, um, Dom, this is just the entrance card to your later life. You will decide after university what you're really going to do. And probably because he was afraid that I will quit in the last semester <laughs> because he knows me. I'm an extreme guy. But I didn't, and this was actually very good that he did, that he said that. And after university, I just wanted to become a surgeon. I don't know, surgeon and aesthetic dentistry was what, what was appealing. And I had a very great um, residency, but this doctor, he, he was a maxillo oral, what is it, maxillofacial surgeon. Yep. And, but he was uh, licensed as a dentist. So where, where he was doing extremely high-skilled implantations, he would, on the other side, doing very old-school dentistry, like placing amalgam fillings, like 80% of all German dentists back then did. And I was like, no, I cannot do amalgam. I learned it in university, but I thought it's just ugly. I cannot do ugly. And I knew my dad was not doing amalgam fillings for 20 years. I heard it was toxic or something. I didn't learn it in university. You certainly didn't too. And this was kind of like when both worlds collapsed, when I had to look it up in the, in the internet. Why was I not doing amalgam besides the vanity point of view? And then I initially found good integrative medicine doctors like Dr. Dietrich Klinghardt and Dr. Joachim Mutter and everything they did about the last, for the last 30 years in terms of heavy metal detoxification, mercury, cadmium lab, all these things. And because this was kind of like the nutrition and uh, micronutrient biochemistry part I was doing for me personally, I just got hooked up to this because it yeah, just resonated with me and I kind of like got addicted and ever since then, I searched everything in terms of 
health optimization and started to look more outside of the box. Maybe because I was, because the skill of dent, being a dentist wasn't too difficult for me and it was just like learning a trick on a skateboard, just to learn a trick, you get better by doing it. And there's not too much things you can learn and apply. So this part was really fulfilling me. And of course I had to learn all this. And for the first year I thought, wow, amalgam filling, removal and detoxification of the body. This is the holy grail. I will help all my patients getting superhuman again, which was certainly not the case. So I dug deeper and deeper and deeper. Of course, always looking for my own problems in terms of overall health. But basically what I learned over the last 20 years is that health should be prior, priority one. Maybe I started with a vanity, aesthetic or performance point of view, but it led me on this road to learning everything for how to optimize the whole body, everything about the gut system. I did functional medicine back in 2012. I probably tried every possible mindset or diet in terms of nutrition. 20 years ago, the trend was, when I started this was of course, carbs were bad, so low carb maybe. I know the years before was the low fat craze. So nowadays it's more like I'm teaching all the patients. Uh, so I have my own food design concepts, it's 40 pages in the book. And it's kind of like uh, a lot of similar to yours. I'm more like fine tu or like I'm tuning macronutrients and fine tuning micronutrients. This one specialty, um, which we do a lot, IV nutrients, recovery. So lots of tools that you would normally see maybe in the biohacking world, which is evolving, or health optimization, the term Tim Gray coined from London, good friend of mine and yeah, founder of the Health Optimization Summit. He, this, this really res resonates with me because this is basically what I do. I try to look how can I get my patients as healthy as possible? And at the same time, of course, we're doing high tech dentistry craftsmanship. This is why I'm a specialist in ceramic implants, the president of the implant, uh, metal free implant society. So on one side, I'm very well known in the dental technique field, which is re really good because I can now finally implement all these overall body optimization tools which are basically way more important or not more important but it, sh it should be the next level to combine all these things and really help your patients getting healthy and having nice and aesthetic teeth so both sides and you can really as a doctor you can see in your mouth you can see everything inflammation toxicity you can actually also smell it so this was the whole concept that developed over the last 15 years so it's more like evolving every day so, but it was my personal interest, which started this. Yeah. It, it's fascinating to hear how individual that journey is. And, you know, could, because people often ask, you know, what is, uh, you know, holistic or biological or, you know, functional dentistry. And there isn't a straight answer for that because it's basically being worked out now. Right. And, you know, your life has kind of, been this journey of following this story of like hang on all of these things kind of fit together and you know i i i know all of these um you know doing these things make my body work better so how can i apply this to my patients and how can i bring a scientific um application and then surgical manner to this and that real that's really what is happening um it, kind of if we if we break it down you know at the moment we're seeing like this rebirthing of of dental medicine right and it's it's people like yourself that have taken a very individual you know individual approach um to bring a lot of different specialities together and saying hey all of this works together that's really going to become you know what hopefully is taught to you know the next generation of students um and so yeah just kind of as, i thought that would be a little bit of a theme as to how we would talk because a lot of people are quite confused as to what biological dentistry is right and and yeah. just as and also on the side too, is that I don't do ceramic implants. And actually, um, when I first heard of you, that was when I knew of them and people around me don't really, really, I don't know of anyone that, that do them well. So it's something that I would love to do my patients, but I don't. Um, and it's, you know, if, if I ever needed an implant, I'd be coming straight to Germany to, to your clinic. Um, and so but there's a problem point for patients out there. And this, I get these questions all the time as to, what do we do until that model is out there? Um, and anyway, so I, I thought we'd kind of go through a few kind of situations like that in where, you know, the ideal model isn't quite there that you've got it there in Germany, but there's a lot of people out there that are kind of in the, um, you know, in the middle zone as, as it were, which is 
you know, this is the problem point we have to, to shoot, you know, problem shoot. How do we get to the next stage? But look, just to start with, like um, you mentioned, you know, mercury fillings there, and, and that is a, an absolute mainstay in conventional dentistry um, and, and still taught to students today. You mentioned 80% of uh, German dentists were putting them in at the time um, that you were first starting practicing. Um, and also that there is this group of people like talking and understanding about the detoxification um, pathways of mercury and heavy metals. Can you go a little bit more in, into that and, um, and a little bit of, you know, how, you know, people should, um, you, cause you write about this in your book, how people should go about potentially removing these from the mouth if they've had them. Yes. Yeah, of course. Amalgam fillings. Yeah. Well, first of all, you should know that they contain 50% of mercury and mercury is the most toxic non-radioactive element known to man. This is just basic science. And after university, I learned that when we remove amalgam or mercury from the mouth of the patient, we have to bring in a special garbage company because it's, it has to be brought away as highly toxic waste. So I was thinking, how can I place highly toxic waste material in a body or in a patient? Of course, if you see the mouth as outside body and this is kind of like it's all regulated that fillings and all these things are just devices. But if you look at it from a toxicity point of view, it's really bad. And you know, this is just basic science that you, every day when you just bite, when you grind your teeth, even when you brush your teeth, when you go to oral hygienist, if you eat um, acidic stuff or drink acidic stuff, there's always a certain little amount of mercury vapor. It's about two to three micron that come out. It's, um, you don't smell it. It's odorless. It, you don't smell it. You don't see it but it will pass through all your cell membranes and then actually get stuck into your cell and then being catalyzed by, by enzymes or oxidized by catalases and then stuck in your tissue, mostly in fatty tissue because it's very, it bounds also good to proteins and stuff groups. So just, just basically- be, Just before we go more into more detail to that, can you explain yeah. what dental students are taught about because yeah what you know yeah, what what most dentists um are taught on that front so i don't know what they get taught today but i studied from 2003 to 2008 and i was trained i actually was trained to do mercury fillings so i learned how to prep the teeth for them i actually worked with them in university and i was taught that it's a very great working material which may be true because it holds it lasts forever and it's easy if you just fill it in, that's it. You don't have to do any special things besides the drilling. And you should only shouldn't use it for kids and for pregnant women and people that are allergic to this, which is, makes really no sense because it's more like a toxic element. So that's what we learn in university. And nobody cared about that it's ugly. It's just the stuff that is subsidized by the, by the government and by the insurance companies. So this is what insurance pays, why? because you can bite on it and it lasts literally forever and it's easy to do and fast. That's what we learned. We didn't learn that there's really how it's really composed of. It's kind of like, it's not really an alloy. It's more like amalgam means a mesh of things. It's an, an Arabic word. And so there's not just mercury, but 50% of all conventional amalgam fittings um, is mercury. And it's kind of like a paste. It's liquid at the beginning and then it gets into this solid stuff and it gets bigger. That's why you also, from a mechanical point of view, to make it last in your teeth, you, you have to drill a lot of the teeth away to make undercuts. Can I say that? Like an undercut in the enamel so that when you press it in, it will then um, expand and then hold through this undercut. So there's no stability in terms of um, stabilizing your teeth or your enamel Whereas the newer versions of composites or adhesive procedures or ceramics, they're always having this um, effect that they rebuild your teeth and make it stable in itself. So it's also from a, just a reparation point of view, amalgam fillings are not really stabilizing your teeth. So you have to think about this besides the aesthetic point of view. But you not learn the biochemistry part that mercury in itself is toxic. Nobody tells you this in university. There's also another, a, a lot of other heavy metals in there, like uh, tin, copper. It's every, every little amalgam is different. It's depending on the company who brings it out, but at least it's mostly heavy metals. And 
I, in my opinion, if we have to remove it as toxic waste, and we know all these things from science, and the most studies are have actually being done in the early 90s, there are so many studies in all my articles that, that I wrote, there are tons of um, the, uh, research uh, on, is on the back of all these articles. Actually, in the book, there's not a lot of them in there because the publishing uh, company just didn't print it because they said it's for the layman, it's not a medical textbook, but you can find all the research, just PubMed it. It's not, I didn't invent this. It's just like going on PubMed, Google Scholar, type in mercury and any sorts of problem, mercury plus multiple sclerosis and you will find research. Kind of like you type in pro-inflammatory cytokines like Rantes and multiple sclerosis, you will find research. This is not, and you will agree, this is not being taught in university. So it's a little bit schizophrenic. You, of course, you go through medical school and you learn biochemistry, you learn chemistry, you learn physics, microbiology, all these medical things. But in the evening, when you go to dental school, you're just focusing on the manual labor and put a gold crown right next to an amalgam filling where you learned in the morning in physics that you shouldn't place different uh, metals right next to each other because there could be a battery with the saliva being an electrolyte. So it's kind of schizophrenic and also most people in dental school, or actually I think probably most people are not interested in sciences. I was actually. And mostly when you pass the examination, biochemistry, you make a check and you will never read about this again in your whole life. You just pass your examination at the end and you just basically focus on drilling holes and repairing and dealing with pain. And just teeth as a biting instrument, which makes sense from history because teeth are in itself just hard they don't seem to grow anymore they don't seem to be alive actually because they're just hard here right and be before we were at medical school we were just in germany was called um a dentist like the english word for dentist yeah dentist was uh, just a craftsman like a carpenter there was no medical thing it was like repairing the teeth again to bite and Nowadays, we are trying, this is biological dentistry, we see the mouth kind of like the mirror for your overall health. And teeth are 32 little organs, they qualify as organs, they have a blood supply, they have a limb supply, they have an autonomic nervous system, meaning sympathetic nervous system, parasympathetic nervous system, and they actually kind of like an elongation of your brainstem, because here's this huge nerve called trigeminous nerve, which is one of 12 cranial nerves, which starts here in the brainstem, and all these teeth are kind of like the end, like your eyes. It's just an extension of your brain. And every endocrinologist just knows that the idea of hormones and to produce hormones, your brain will send signals to your adrenal glands. And then the adrenal glands will send out hormones in your bloodstream, whatever. And then they work wherever they be needed. The same goes for, let's say, an inflammatory process on your tooth. Of course, all these cytokines will be traveling through the nerve. It's called retrograde axonal transport and then work systemically. But this is the part where you don't get really trained. And this is something that you have to learn. It's kind of like an update. Um, when you come from university, you maybe have the, the basic structure. You know, you have like, your computer's running, but you're not iPhone generation 10 now. So you, in order to get all the apps working, you need a few updates. You need to really learn about immunology. You need to learn about toxicology really in depth. Functional medicine, like how all organs function, and what very important, what's very important is the autonomic nervous system, how hypothalamus, pituitary, stress axis. And this is what we teach on all, on all our seminars and internships and whatever. Because, of course, I am personally, like you said, I cannot help a lot of people. I maybe can do 30,000 surgeries, and I actually have patients coming from Australia to my clinic. So they find me on all sorts of channels. But this is not the goal. The goal is to train as or clone as many doctors like us, so that we can maybe, let's see if I train thousand dentists or, or medical doctors, doesn't matter actually, we can maybe help 30 million people with the new view of optimal health, like not treating, not sick care, but healthcare, like functional medicine anyways does. And just to, add, to finalize this monologue of mine, um, my goal is more like every doctor or or health practitioner, naturopath, functional medicine doctor, health coach, even fitness coach, whatever. Everybody who, who takes care about something in the body or optimizing it should know the full blueprint of how the whole body works in itself. 
This should, everybody should know about nutrition, about lifestyle, about all these hacks. And then you can send out to the different specialists. So my specialty is oral surgery and ceramic implants, biological dentistry, meaning I will always take care about everything. And, but if you go to, for example, an orthopedic doctor, they deal with chronic pains and joints and stuff. And 80% of these pains, I know a lot of orthopedic doctors, are called, in German it's called idiopathic, it's the same in English, idiopathic. And that means they actually don't know where the pain is coming from. And then they, they have to decide, oh, should we do a surgery or should we not do a surgery? Of course, you shouldn't do a surgery. You should search for the root cause of it. And actually, the root cause for joint problems, and this sounds weird, but it could be in your mouth. It could also be in your gut. There's something called um, focal infection stuff. This is Weston Price's idea and from back like more than 100 years ago. So you really need to learn more about the whole body system and then go with the specialties in terms of techniques. So I'm a surgeon. You probably could teach me how to do a heart surgery because it's anatomy. You need to know how to cut. You need to know how to um, use stitches and stuff. And then I can learn this because I'm good with my hands. But what everybody should know is just like, how does it all correlate? It's not maybe not positive, but how does everything interplay? Does it make sense? Yeah, absolutely. That, you know, you're, you're basically saying that, um, you know, at, at medical and dental school, and you describe it pretty well, dental students kind of have these big lows, like we're learning medical um, curriculum. And then on the side, you're kind of learning dental curriculum, which is much more physical based. It's like how to pull teeth out. How do you do local anesthesia? Yeah. You know, and then while all the, um, while all the medical students are generally learning about all the body and you kind of rush through the medical stuff because you're so busy trying to learn the other stuff, right? And then you kind of stack it all on and then you, you're, you're learning more detailed procedures with, um, in, in the mouth. And then at the end yes. of it, you learn some kind of, um, you know, kind of oral medicine stuff, you know, like some, some of the strange um, uh, diseases you see in the mouth. And then you, you get some very, very general um, statements on the mouth connecting to the body. You know, like you see the literature, you know, gum disease is, is very much told in university that is connected to um, heart disease and so forth. But there's no interconnecting dots. There's none. And so, and what you've described is that there's, it's all out there. It's kind of up to the practitioners and the, and you're kind of describing that the profession as a whole needs another step in order to kind of help practitioners to go out and be, you know, just beyond mechanical teeth fixes. And to be honest, you know, we need the mechanical teeth fixes too, you know, it's, it's necessary. But then on top of that, you need people that are thinking on a whole, that, you know, well, how is this connecting to other sicknesses in the body, talking to medical doctors and so forth. And that the whole model is then starting to, to heal in a way. Um, yeah. So it's, there's a lot of onus on individuals there, you know, because you've spent a lot of time and effort and, and money, obviously, on upskilling yourself. Um, and so this is kind of the problem point, right? Like, you know, how do we get this, um, this knowledge out to the whole world? And, you know, what you're doing training professionals is definitely a, a good approach to that. It needs to happen because, you know, unless we have clinics, you know, somewhere in the, in the realms of, um, you know, look, lo like local to people that are accessible, then, you know, you can read this stuff on the internet, but sometimes you need treatment and yeah, it's, it's a big problem, but uh, I, you know, I think, you know, just talking about it obviously is the first step. Um, you know, one thing, um, you know, I, it, when I was reading your book, you, you kind of flesh out a little bit and you start to talk about how you, you, um, you approach your patients and, and one thing in your diagnostic tools, you say, you know, how teeth connect to organs. This is a really interesting um, area of physiology that isn't, uh, isn't well um, discussed and it kind of connects to um, Eastern medicine. Um, do, do you want to go into a little bit the, um, the connection and the rationale between how teeth connect to different organ parts, but also to um, how you use that a little bit in your patient presentations, you know, what, what, what you're thinking when you see um, certain presentations in the mouth? Yes, yes. So basically, there are a few German guys back in the 60s or 70s that with electroacupuncture sorted out where all the T's are connected to the whole body in terms of Chinese medicine would be meridians or you would maybe say in medical terms, maybe with the autonomic nervous system, how does this all correlate? And this is basically also easily to, easy to explain in medical terms 
And I know that for now, meridians are still, at least for conventional trained doctors, are kind of woo-woo. Whereas with thermography, they're already scientifically proven. So they use, it's just like, it takes a little bit to accept this, but basically every teeth is connected to your whole body. For example, the, the incisor here is on the bladder and kidney meridian. So you can just look up what kind of problems in your whole body can stem from it, like prostate problems, is also very much connected to your spine, C1 to C4. This is actually something very, very important. And in terms of neurotherapy or acupuncture, every organ has a dermatome. This is the same word in English, dermatome. That means yes. an yes. organ represents on the skin top surface, like liver would be this dermatome. The only organs in the body which don't have a dermatome are your teeth and your um, tonsils and your sinuses. They only have a myotome, which means they are represented in, in muscle. And they're actually represented in the deep neck flexor, C1 to C4. So you see most patients with dental problems having like a super cramped neck. And of course, if you check anatomy, if this is all cramped up, the plexus brachialis and everything doesn't work anymore. And of course, they get like numb arms and they have shoulders and neck pains and all these things. And then, of, and then we use stuff like neurotherapy, which is a medical thing it's not woo woo it's one of the oldest me me uh, medical treatments in germany it was invented by the haneke brothers back in 1900 and they just use procaine and what we do sometimes is when we see a patient for the first time we just check for oral interference so that means from besides looking at it from a the mechanical point of view which you said it's super important that's the basis for all our work but then we will check, are there any metals, are there any root canals or any cavitations? And we will just basically inject the mouth with procaine, which is a local anesthetic, but it doesn't go through your liver. It's just being um, um, uptaken locally and is super anti-inflammatory and kind of offsets the sympathetic nervous system there. And I always tell my patients, kind of like a new start or a reset of your computer. And then I will just let the body or the patient's and monitor their body for 24 hours and look what they can see not here but somewhere else like how is it all connected if there's a patient who, for example cannot lift his arm above 90 degrees i will always check this within 30 seconds because most of the time it's suddenly possible because some interference here again goes to the nerve it's all blocked it opens up a little bit and we can use this whole meridian chart or it's called odontone in german I don't know how you call it in English. I think just tooth meridian chart is the proper translation. And it a lot of times refers to, of course, problems in your mouth can through this whole connection affect the whole body organs. For example, lower molar is always colon, large intestine, whereas upper premolar is the same. You just have to basically know all these and then you can initially diagnose. So I always just ask patients, okay, what you can experience today on my surgery when we remove all the interference is, do you maybe have cold hands and feet? What about your neck? Is it not movable? I don't even know my patients yet. So I see them on day of surgery. That's the first time. It's all remotely controlled. And I most of the time know exactly what their problems are. Chronic fatigue is just the usual suspect. Uh, irritable bowel syndrome because the, the cavitation area, which is most likely is the wisdom teeth, which you also discuss in your book that wisdom teeth are going to be removed most of the time. And it leaves these nasty cavitations and chronic inflammation to the jawbone. And this is from the meridian point of view, the number eight, the wisdom tooth. It's small intestine, heart meridian. This is Chinese medicine. Small intestine refers really to the small intestine, but also represents itself on bodily meridian structures, for example, shoulder pain, but also, of course, irritable bowel syndrome, and SIBO, like functional medicine points, like. Um, a lot of food intolerances, but also skin problems. It's the large intestine, uh, the small intestines a lot. It's a huge detoxification area. And heart is always, of course, circulation, cold hands, cold feet. Ask your patients. They all have cold hands, cold feet if they have chronic problems. And also the adrenal glands, which is a triple warmer, are connected to this. So this is a huge problem in terms of chronic um, of chronic disease. And this is the epidemic. And according to a few great doctors in the field, it's about 70% of chronic disease start actually in your mouth by chronic inflammation, chronic infection, high load of cytokines, high toxicity load because of materials that shouldn't be used in your body. 
and you name it. And of course, this fight and flight, constant overreactivity of the sympathetic nervous system, which will lead over time to your body not being in a regulatory mode. So normally you should switch off between sympathetic and parasympathetic. Not, nothing is bad here, we need both. So I have a lot of patients coming in with high cytokine, uh, with a fight and flight response 24 seven. But also if that's too long, they go in the other mode. They don't have any sympathetic anymore. They're only in parasympathetic, so they de decompensate. That's what the word is. So you know, do, can you follow? Is that yep. too complicated? So you just really have to understand how your whole body deals with stress and chronic stress or chronic inflammation. Every functional medicine doctor knows this is the basis for all chronic diseases. But unfortunately, even in functional medicine, everybody just start. I don't know. The mouse is just kind of like not a part of the body. You maybe learn about heavy metal detoxification, but and also that you just maybe go to a dentist and look for melanin fillings. But I see so many people also on podcasts talking about how to detoxify, how all these protocols work. But you have to remove the source first, man. This is so important. And Hal Huggins, one of our, the grandfathers of biology dentistry, actually a student of Western Price, he he had this nice um, visual or. He was saying, if you detox anybody before you remove the sauce, it's kind of like you're showering and trying to dry off at the same time. Makes no sense in terms of detoxing stuff, for example, heavy metals. Why are you still having heavy metals here in your mouth as amalgam fillings, for example? This is still the biggest source of uh, mercury toxicity in your body, just medical known. Then you just redistribute these things. This actually can make problems worse because you want to remove the source under safe removal, of course, not just drill it out at the dentist, really under safe precautions, and then help your body with its own detoxification and excretion and removal. You don't have to go crazy on chelations at the beginning. That's not even necessary. And this is something that comes later in the therapy. But first of all, remove the source. Maybe I can show you a slide here. I don't know if you allow this. Should I show a little slide here about optimal health? Yeah, if you can share your screen, that will be I, I can try something that doesn't work. I try. Can you see this? You yes. You see, yes. right? Yep. See, this is my definition of optimal health. You see, there's a lot of things from biohacking, health optimization, the lifestyle, the diet, the nutrition, all these things that we teach. But this is stuff, deficiencies, blood work, and supplementing it. This is stuff you can all do at home. Basically, you can do where I do with the cursor. You can all do these things at home. And prepare for surgery and, and health optimization. That's what we do. And this part here, the kind of bluish and purple color here. Can you see that? Yep. It's called remove the source. This is a thing you cannot biohack your way around the dentist. So like you said, we need us dentists, but we need us dentists to know all the other things too. Because we having really, we can really help people getting healthy besides doing the achievement and surgeries and high aesthetic works and stuff this is amazing everybody has fun doing this but fulfilling is when a patient comes in with with a folder like this 20 years of his medical history has seen 25 different doctors still not being superhuman doing all these things you remove the source under special precautions installing materials that are biocompatible and on the next day he tells you dude my depression is gone. I can lift my arm again. Oh, it seems like my body is already doing better. Oh, I have cold, I have warm hands and warm feet. I feel so relaxed. Like I, I can think straight again. My brain fog has lifted. You just name it. This is when it becomes fulfilling. And then it's not work anymore. And I think this is also, if you get it as a dentist and you, you step off your ego and that you're the white doctor and you're the best with the mechanicals, that's all fine. But if you really can see how helping patients will fulfill both lives um, you you are up to something because because normally patients don't like to go to the dentist dentist is more like oh i have to go see the dentist because maybe you have pain you need a pain treatment but my patients wait they prepare they do all these lifestyle things because we have this all structured you can have this for free and and this will be individualized when they're then here, but they will start already. So they don't have to see 20 different practitioners. They will just start with standardized stuff to optimize health and then come see us to remove the sores, use all sorts of recovery. So I do IV nutrition for more than 10 years and I'm very, have a lot of protocols invented there also for micronutrients. So we will, of course, use all the knowledge that is there. And I don't say that I have all knowledge, not at all, but I'm curious 
And every day I wake up with this passion to search things. So I read all books, I listen to podcasts, I do all these things and implement this. And yeah, this is just fulfilling if you have your patience, kind of like being your fans then instead of like, oh no, I have to see you. Then of course you should have a shitty life if you do something that somebody doesn't appreciate, right? Whereas if we just go next level and implement all these structures, it's not that I'm taking your work and that then you have to be afraid and in protection mind as another dentist that I will do it better. No, actually I cannot help everybody. Optimal health is what everybody on the whole world should, look, should be looking for, especially in, in times of COVID-19. And then there are so many people that you can help. So I, sh I think this should be, and hopefully will be, the next level that also is going to be taught in university. And because it's empirical, now, like I'm doing this for 15 years, now finally the professors in the German university are coming and asking for studies about the ceramic implants, because I did 3,000 pieces, so I have data without an end. Nobody did, not a lot of people of the, all over the world did that. And, and it will come, but it's always empirical first, and then we make it research-based. And this is very important, but the, the good thing is that they are coming now, and um, we will do, put in the research, which is already there. It's just connecting the dots. You know, if you PubMed everything, you will find it. But if you don't know how an inflammatory innate immune response with um, cytokines like TNF-alpha, et cetera, starts, how will you know how it all is connected to your mouth? You know what I mean? Yeah, actually, while we're there, I mean, there's so many questions, you know, you, you've got such a, you know, a deep protocol and, um, you know, how you approach things. Um, but, you know, you, this speciality of um, ceramic implants is one that I think that um, is particularly um, interesting is, you know, considering that, um, you know, 99% of um, implants being put in around the world are titanium. Can you explain that a little bit? What are the downsides of um, titanium and whether they're ever safe or, and, and then how, your protocol into ceramic implants? Yes. Thanks. It's a great question. Um, yeah. Like I said, 99% of all implants at the moment that dentists face are titanium, which is a metal. And I, I also learned titanium, but because I was interested in all these things, I was searching for a metal fee solution like 10 years ago and luckily find one, uh, found one. But good thing is over the last, I would say three years, finally, all the big companies like Strawman and like the bigger names, Novel Biocare, Camelot, all these dental companies with titanium is coming out with ceramic implants anyhow, because it's just more aesthetic. Every, day, every patient would choose a white tooth implant over a gray. The only, maybe there are a few that want to be terminated and look like a mechanic, they will use titanium. So from an aesthetic point of view, it makes, it's a no brainer. This is, comes very handy for us because titanium, maybe 10, 20 years ago, it wasn't a problem, but the environment changes. So you maybe heard of electromagnetic fields, and it's still actually in the common media, it's still woo woo that you say that Wi Fi, 3G, 4G. Now, 5G is a little bit more discussed at the moment with COVID. There are these conspiracy theories and stuff. But electromagnetic fields since 2019 are qualified as carcinogenic. Nobody knows this. It's kind of like the cigarette smoke of the 21st century. It's more like, um, and but because I'm dealing with this, uh, with this stuff for a long time. I cannot place any metal at all. Even if your body, from an immune point of view, wouldn't be allergic to titanium, or um, there's also no big toxicity reason here. We have these electromagnetic waves everywhere. It's just, you cannot go without Wi-Fi nowadays. It's just loaded, the environment. So every metal in your mouth will be a small antenna. And there are studies showing, for example, that you know if you do a phone call, the electromagnetic waves come from the cell phone tower to your phone and go back. If you have any sort of metal in your body, it could also be a piercing in your nose. But if you have an in implant installed in your jawbone surrounding like the trigeminous nerve, this implant will amplify electromagnetic fields and maybe make your patient electrosensitive or also heats up the metal inside your mouth. It could also be a crown or just a metal filling. It's also studies showing, I can send you this, that if you do a phone call while having a mercury filling, that there is more mercury vapor release. I think it's even from 2008, this study. So there's nothing new. No, just you don't read it in a dental magazine. 
So the topic of electromagnetic stressors and having metals in your mouth, that doesn't go well in these um, sensory animals. So you have to just be smart about this. And if you want to protect yourself, metal wouldn't be the way to go. So I'm very happy that the final piece to my biological dentistry puzzle, because of course I remove all root canal treated teeth from a biological point of view. My patients come to see me for this. So I have to, I cannot just rip out teeth. I'm not a, I'm a very skilled doctor. So my goal is to conserve anatomy. And I know that if you place an implant right away, even if it's titanium, it will stabilize bone and tissue called socket preservation. And I needed a biocompatible solution and found um, Dr. Ulrich Foltz, like he's doing, he has a ceramic implant company. He's doing this for 20 years and I found him 10 years ago and learned all the ceramic implant parts from him because I was searching for the whole, for the whole biological dentistry protocol. So you can see the ceramic implants is not my focus, not at all. It's just a piece to the puzzle of how to get your patient, um, yeah, that he can bite on a biocompatible material and also use these ceramic implants. That's why we call them bone growing implants to preserve the socket and implant them immediately. So I'm able to put an immediate ceramic implant I would say in above 95% of all cases, even if there are huge cysts and stuff. Um, oh. But my, fo yeah, my focus is never the ceramic implant. My focus is optimal health. Why? Because this is just my priority, but also from just a dental, like mechanical point of view, a ceramic implant doesn't also integrate in an unhealthy bone or unhealthy body who is not able to build bone because it just also integrates when there's a healthy structure and when your body overall is able to build tissue and bone, whereas a titanium implant kind of also integrates through an ongoing innate immune response. That means there's always going to be cytokines involved, TNF alpha, IL B, uh, interleukin one beta, IL six. And I don't want to have these strong inflammatory cytokines for me and my body or my patients, because I know if I look into the research, that those are contributing to major depression, that IL-6 is um, reducing your growth hormone, your sexual hormones, and basically yeah, makes you, can, you, can make you really feel sick every day, 24 seven. So I'm happy that there is the solution. And I know that we have to do a lot to train dentists. And I'm very happy that the aesthetic dentistry finally, or people that are aesthetically pleased they want to choose the ceramic implants. And luckily, I'm an early adopter and can now bring in all this information. And lucky, actually, it's really ever since one year, all my friends from university, like you and me, we're kind of the same age. We, I call them the cool kids. They do biohacking. They're interested in, of course, the high-tech skill, but also in helping people and doing new things because actually dentistry conventional is kind of boring at the end if you cannot really help people besides uh, biting and looks, which is great. But if you do the overall and they see it in my, my, one of my best friends, he was always like, dude, the stuff you're doing, it's just woo woo, go away. He is my biggest fan since that. He's also becoming an enthusiast. He's giving speeches, lecturing, because he just, his mindset just switched. He gave me so many WhatsApp messages like, Dom, I cannot, now I finally get you. It's really fulfilling. I just looked at all these cone beams just from a mechanical point of view. Can I place an implant there? Yes, of course. But I never saw cavitations, osteolytic processes, that it's all correlating or connected to your whole body. And I think this information, this is what I'm actually doing. Some of my friends told me, you're doing the public relations for this um, thing right now. And I think, like you said, we have to talk about this, implement it with all the other wolves, and then, and then in the next step, we'll train more dentists that are going to be interested. You cannot imagine how many DMs I get on a daily basis from dentists all over the world. Finally, finally, really, 10 years, they punched me, yeah, like emotionally. They cannot imagine how many shitstorms you get when you do stuff that is a little bit new. Maybe you do. Yeah, yeah. It's, there's a resistance in the um, healthcare realms to, to new things. Uh, and, you know, that makes kind of sense because, you know, things have to be safe and they have to be proven. But, yeah, there's also, um, you know, there's also that old school protectiveness that exists uh, that is somewhat harmful a lot of the time. Um, 
actually it, it brings up an interesting point because um you know you kind of sit in this realms of uh, natural therapies that is very kind of it, it is looked down upon in the conventional healthcare setting and you know naturopaths aren't very well um seen you know they they the their work isn't very well respected by medical doctors how do you view i mean you've been trained in um in dental medicine how do you view the evidence base in naturopathy um as it stands up for a, a healthcare modality does it need to come further or is it there and we're just not seeing it well, where is that sitting now yeah like you say it's there you just don't you you're not learning this it's more like maybe you can feel this now when you get when you know me i'm it's more just my passion and I'm just looking outside of the box for solutions. In my opinion, who, ha who heals or who helps, th this is what we have to do besides our egos. And actually, absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. But funny thing is, most of the time you find evidence if you just know how to look. It's not your passion. I do that for the last 15 years. Because I love to do the research like you do it, Stephen. And if you just type in whatever, like every herb nowadays. So like in the, let's say 500 years ago, all the witch doctors were being burned because they probably did something with the herbs that wasn't accepted from medical school or like the church maybe back then. And it's always the same. It's go it goes along with the mindset and what you can how small is your box or how, how you say, how protective is your mind? So I'm in a growth mindset. Everything that works and helps me get better or my patient get better, I will implement. Even if I don't have the research yet, I will search for this. And 10 years ago, all my friends told me, dumb, and not even my boss back then, you have to believe this. Maybe you have to at the beginning, but I told them, I'm going to explain you guys in chemistry, biochemistry, physics, microbiology, you name it, and I will connect the dots in the research. So, for example, cavitations. Have you heard of cavitations? Yeah, this yeah, I, I, I've, um, I've heard of them. I, I don't see them very often, but uh, that's, that's something I'd like you to explain. I will, I, will send, I will send you my current interview with the Yoda of cavitations, I call him. It's Dr. Johann Lechner. He did research in the field of cavitation. Cavitation is the layman term for something called, sometimes referred to as NICO, which is totally wrong. It's a pathological term. In medical science, it would be chronic ischemic bone disease, or better would be FDOJ, which stands for fatty degenerative osteonecrotic jawbone. Every surgeon knows this, but it's not taught in university. And Dr. Lechner is doing research for this. Why? I asked him. I asked him, why, how did you come across this 40 years ago? And he said, 40 years ago, it was just normal for all the dentists in Germany to remove those fatty tissues in the bone. And actually, even Brandemark, who kind of invented titanium impl implants, said back then in the 80s, yellow bone, no implant. This was somehow forgotten. And Dr. Lechner, he, he wanted to make something that was empirical back then, but everybody was just doing it. He wanted to make it research-based. So he has 12 peer-reviewed papers directly correlating the cavitation, the FDOJ, with systemic disease. And what he found, he, he looked for cytokines and for all sorts of things in these nasty chronic side inflammations which basically develop after removing any sort of teeth without proper pre-treatment of the patient and body by basically just doing surgery in hibernation mode in in your observations uh what what kind of percentage are you seeing it in patients i mean are you, are you would probably have a high um percentage but like in, in normally what would you your guess be how many people um patients are experiencing cavitation from extractions so at least in western teeth or any sort of teeth removed from a regular dentist just like get an appointment go in there get the extraction done like as fast as possible as rough as possible whatever big cuts huge surgeon i would say 99.9 percent .9 end up having a cavitation there maybe it's different if you live in um, more sunny countries because you have more vitamin d3 maybe better food and i i have a lot of patients coming in from the u.s and they have huge cavitations because of the mold problem in the US. Mm. And mold needs to kind of aggravate to these areas because those are kind of, those are caves. And they are away from the metabolism of the body and kind of anaerobic bacteria and parasites. Also, they found glyphosites and it's kind of like a huge dumping area. They seem to live there. 
And of course, if you have mold in your body, you know, and if it's a compartment also on your brain nerve, of course, you're not healthy. And of course, you may be depressed. And of course, you may be not feeling good. So I would say it's a very high percentage of all the Western countries who just go in for surgery, having a bad lifestyle, which you also discussed. Like, I would say that you have the same consensus in terms of, of course, no sugar eating, no wheat, no, I say no, no, no grains at all, no dairy. And the most important is probably highly refined vegetable oils. But if you do all this, like well, the general population does, having a lack of micronutrients like vitamin D3, minerals, vitamin K2, etc., and then going to surgery without being prepared, your body is just not in a recovery or in an anabolic state. It's just not possible. And then it just develops over time. And what he found, Dr. Lechner, was one specific cytokine throughout thousands of cavitations, which is called R. A N T E S, Rantes. And you find it in medical literature as Rantes and as the, syn the synonym would be CCL5, just PubMed. This. You will find lots of research. And what I didn't know, and he told me, if you type in Rantes on Google Scholar, which is the and multiple sclerosis, you will find. 3,000 references and his studies are actually directly linking for example I have one study from him and another good German um, microbiologist they are linking this high ranty cytokine with malian carcinoma because of course if your body is in a chronic inflammatory state and has to produce cytokines um, and cannot regulate anymore it's problematic because this ranty is in itself reverse so i will send you this link and you should definitely spread this through through our community um yeah because of course i he did all the research and all the thing and also learned of, uh, i had did his course back then so your connection's starting to get a little bit jumpy there are you there uh it's the connection's just jumping a little bit that's okay um I think it works because I'm on landline, so I don't have any Wi-Fi. It should it, be. It, it might be mine. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you want me to restart no. the last? I, I think I think it's going to record. Yeah, it's it's just I missed your last, but that's that's okay. Um, no, yeah, cavitations are. Um, what would be your um, your top three tips for people that suspect they have a cavitation um, and finding a, a a dentist or oral surgeon to treat this? Yeah, this, this is the, the difficult part because, of course, we, we are training and we have a curriculum. And so far, we have ex we have examined thirty. I have examined thirty. We call them specialists for biological dentistry and ceramic implants. I have done the examination. That means I feel comfortable sitting on their chair. They're doing my surgery. So the problem we are facing right now is actually because probably also because of me doing the PR with the book and with all the podcasts and stuff, there are lots of dentists now calling themselves biological dentists or whatever. And also tell patients that they're good friends with me. And then I see what they're planning and they have actually no idea. They maybe listened to one YouTube video of me or maybe went to one course, but they're certainly not certified. So I have to work on something in this, in this field to make it, because I want to have this next level and don't want to have it being ruined by people that are not doing perfect craftsmanship. So you have to find somebody first, but just for you, if you do all the things I showed on the slide and you're still not being super healthy, something is holding you back. It could be oral interference. It could be a root canal. It could be a cavitation. So just basically, have you ever had your wisdom teeth removed? This is the initial question I would ask myself. Then you know, this is from the meridian chart. It's connected to your central nervous system heart meridian and small intestine. So chronically like fatigue irritable bowel syndrome, whereas having a perfect diet could be a lead magnet to this. And then you have to search for, of course, biological dentistry and you have to really search for nico cavitations. And there are a few people in the US already doing this. But all the specialists I've trained are more like in Germany, Switzerland, and Austria, mostly Germany. But we're working on the U.S. side. And the U.S. ceramic implant, 
company, no, not company, society, like our ISMI is called IAOCI, the International Academy of Oral Ceramic Implantology. The founder is my good friend, Dr. Sammy Numbisi. And those guys that are listed there, they know at least about all these things. I don't know if they all do the surgery already or have the protocols because besides doing the surgery, the most important thing is actually how you prepare for surgery and how you post care for surgery. What is the recovery you're doing and how is your lifestyle going to look like after surgery? And there's the research in medical fields. When your body is prepared and able to heal and turn over tissue very fast, it will work. Whereas if you don't be able to do this, look at the Framingham osteoporosis study, protein, like they, they, they list protein as the building block for like joint fractures. And they can see if you eat one gram per protein, which is really low on, on my perspective, one gram seems to be the sweet spot. If you go below one gram, it could be that you, that you stay in the hospital after a broken leg for 30 days longer. And you will heal way, way faster. It's kind of like, it's just a no brainer that you, you have to know how to rebuild a home or a house. In this case, your body. You need the construction stuff to be supplied and you need workers. If you don't have them, nothing gets repaired. So this is, this is my specialty. Like I said, the part that you were missing was probably Bruce Lee. You use what is useful, you reject what is not, and you add uniquely own. So because I'm doing all these nutritional stuff for these years, I implemented all these strategies to just help your body yeah, get to optimal performance level and, and recovery. And then it's going to be a massive change. And of course, also the implants also integrate then, which is just a byproduct in my opinion. But for conventional dentists, this is the most important because they're afraid of failure. Failure is defined as, oh, the implant is not stable. So make yourself an easy time and take care of the rest of the body. Yeah, it's a, you know, it, it's fascinating how, um, you know, you, this story, you know, you, you're talking about this 10 year track and, um, you know, the, the fight to kind of put all this together and then, you know, you know, the, you know, the courses and, and everything, how it comes together. But then this is all starting to kind of reach a, you know, the tipping point really isn't it? It's, it's fascinating that, you know, we're seeing that next wave of evolution of the, um, you know, and, and this really needs to kind of go broad, you know, really broad, broad spectrum in terms of healthcare, right? It has to go right. to the doc, you know, it really needs to be understood right across the healthcare spectrum. And, um, you know, it, it, it has to start somewhere, you know, you're doing a great job at that. Um, man, man, I got to ask you, how, how does the, uh, the no bread, um, recommendation in Germany go? Because, you know, it's a bread culture there, isn't it? <laughs> I, I can't imagine people like that. Yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. I had a hard time with the no bread policy <laughs> at the beginning, but now it's like, of course, like you said, I have a very unique patients, clientele, so that all all in this field and they are lucky that I give them these recommendations. But because it's so difficult, of course, I also search for years for alternatives. So I also have a, it's a store and health food store that I opened in my little town called Juicery, where you like the, the nutritional part I, I designed it's basically just my 20 years of experience and I press, I compressed it to a 10 pager, which every patient has in their email inbox after the initial consultation, just to read. There's just basically a red chart for food intolerances and toxins. And on the right side, it's just all the alternatives. Healthy fats, healthy carbohydrates, because there is no enemy in terms of macronutrients, even if the media wants to believe you this, you just have to know when to use what, this is where I come in, but forget about this. So when they have to start a new lifestyle, this is kind of like the, comp the competition of, no, not a competition, this is my moral oblig obligation that I kind of like challenge my patients to change their lifestyle before they even see me and then individualize it when they see me because I want to have a lasting impact because removing the source is one just tiny bit. And of course I can help them reach the next level of health, but if they stick to this, it will, um, it will work. And I found out just by doing this with thousands of patients and myself, 
the easier I make and prepare this for these patients, the easier they will follow. So I will not put them my mindset on them. So I don't tell them if they're coming in as a vegan, I don't tell them to eat meat. But I, of course, eat their bread and they're insulin resistant. And I tell them to not eat grains. In this shop that I have in town, at least we have a few different fish. They are also, you can use it as a ketogenic version. The US is insulin resistant. And so we have to a little bit check on carbohydrates at the beginning and inflammation coming from these. So yes, we have to find alternatives. And I'm a good, I'm, one of my things is just making these things super easy, applicable. And this store is already a franchise concept. It's called Superfoods Health Food Barn Store. And one of my patients already opened one in another town in, in Germany, in Leipzig. It's just an awareness principle. It's for our community of health optimizers, biohackers, and whatever. So I work on implementing easy structures because it, it's all about having fun while doing it. And of course, the concept is out of all mindsets I tried, I just picked the best things and then I just time it in terms of how the mindset presents and what do I want to achieve. I want to have my patients being as anabolic as possible, of course, when they came after surgery because they want to have their tissue healed. But it's maybe totally different if you have a cancer patient, you have to maybe put them on a three months keto, which maybe doesn't involve animal protein and there are autoimmune problems which you maybe bring it down more easy and actually did an online course on online next Friday where the whole food design concept is remapped. Make it yeah, accessible. You there? I lost you for a little yeah. bit there. Yeah, but I, I think yeah. it's going to record both ends. We'll check. Um, yeah, yeah, it's recording. I can see all the time. Yeah. It's maybe your Wi-Fi. Yeah, I think, oh man, Australian Wi-Fi is the worst, honestly. It's, it's a nightmare trying to do these, these interviews. The Wi-Fi, is, Wi-Fi is anyway the worst. I have, come look at this here. I'm a nerd when it comes to this. Even <laughs> I, have an old, I have an old school keyboard, which is not Bluetooth. Yeah. So even my mouse is corded. So yeah. I'm on landline. I don't have any Wi-Fi. And this is one strategy for you with your little babies. You read the book. You can see it in the back here, this one. EMF yeah, from Dr. Yeah. Ola. He has it uh, all made easy for, and, and digestible. Babies don't have, basically don't have any protection from this uh, Wi-Fi. And just switch it off at nighttime. And phone should be in airplane mode all the time. Uh, and then you already like being smart about the techniques because I'm a fan of techniques or of, of the technical things, but use it smart because you want to be healthy. Look at this. I also track everything with an aura ring, mm. but you can switch this in airplane mode too. Yeah. But you have the data at the same time. And yeah. it's a really big thing. Yeah, man, you're a well, you're a wealth of knowledge and there's, there's so much to talk about really. You know, we, we could go for hours, but we'll have to, you know, we'll, we'll pull it short there. Um, now where can people find you? Like what's, uh, so your book, uh, all in the mouth is available in, uh, obviously across Europe, but also now America, uh, on Amazon and, and your website and for dentists that are looking to do your training course, uh, is that just in Europe or? Yes. At the, at the moment, it's more like I'm more booked to speak on bigger conventions in functional medicine and of course also in dentistry just to bring them more like the knowledge and not having too much time and doing my own seminars, mm. but you can do private and semi private internships with me one-on-one. -on -one. This is something you can, if you're really keen, but we have the curriculum um, which you can do through the company um, Swiss dental solutions. Those are the ceramic implants I'm using, or you just go to the website for the dentist. Very important where I'm the president, the international society for metal free implantology is ismi.me it's also available in english and there you will you will see a few conventions courses maybe where you can where you can start of course you start with all the stuff i'm putting out all the articles you can read the book 
it's all in your mouth. I'm on Instagram and then Instagram I'm doing only to spread knowledge about all these other things. I show my lifestyle, I show what you can do on a daily basis, I show a little bit about nutrition, I show a little bit about the dental part. So this is really kind of like a health magazine, that's how I designed it. And I, uh, it, there are a lot of dentists following, but also it's for the layman, so everybody can use this. I will certainly send you an email with, if you want to, with all the links and podcasts and YouTube. I have a YouTube channel, Dr. Dominic Nischwitz. You can find also some um, snippets of um, speeches I gave. And yeah, basically you can find everything from me online for free because I don't, I want to push uh, and contribute and do it, have an impact. I don't want to be the one guy who holds back everything and being in protective mind and I'm the guy you have to see me. No, not at all. I'm the guy who wants to share and meet with all the other experts like you, Stephen. And I call them the other wolves and form a wolf pack to really help spread this information. And finally, the final piece, attach the mouth to your whole body. Functional medicine, the biology dentistry being the overlap of functional medicine, biohacking, health optimization, and the high-tech dentistry, which all of us dentists love. I had an interview with Christian Coachman. He's one of the most well-known aesthetic dentists. So finally, they're coming and he's super open-minded. So I'm seeing the trend now. You can you remember, I was emotionally attacked big time for my colleagues, protective ones. It's changing and this is the good thing because it's really not about me and you maybe see it's just my passion. And if you're interested in this health optimization field, I'm going to give a presentation. It depends, of course, on COVID and if, of all, if all the things work, but the summit is going to be uh, in London and I'm very much looking forward to this to meet all the other influencers or game changers in terms of functional medicine, you name it, Dr. McCullough, whatever, they will all, all be there and speak and it's going to be just, I love to be with like-minded people, that's what I call a professional or like I wanted to be a professional skateboarder, now I'm a professional doctor and I'm luckily able to hang with all the experts and then we share knowledge and this is what I'm having really fun. So I really look forward to this. It's in September, Health Optimization in London. Tim Gray, you can follow him, good friend of mine. So this is something when you're interested in this, all other things, that you, there you will probably have the wolf pack in one like big time thing that's amazing ismi and of course maybe you have show notes and i will send you all the links and you can you have that yeah if you yeah we'll push through some of those links via email and we'll, and we'll put them into the um in, into the into the email and the the youtube links yeah is this can you send me this uh the record and i put it on my youtube too right? yeah absolutely yeah 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 share this is also very important we are sitting here, Stephen and me. So we are both dads. Yeah, he has two little kids. I have three little kids, a family way. Healthier place, maybe. And taking our time to spread knowledge and information, to just use it and at least send it to people that you love and that you think need this information. Yeah, absolutely. And look, uh, like you say, there's a lot... So I was just gonna say that there's a there's a lot of people around. I've I've looked at a lot of people around the world doing this, and and in the dental field, especially, you're doing you know some of the best and most progressive work that I've seen. So it's really important, and you know I love hearing about this stuff. You know, we're there's a lot more to be talked about in this space. I'm looking forward to you know picking your brain more, man. Yeah, man, it's going to be amazing. We should yeah, kind of like a wolf pack, and then everybody else should spend. This was the idea with the book and your book, sure too. We cannot go into university, it's just too slow. But if you know this information, and the dentist will be interested in all this, you as a patient demand it, and then maybe we'll change it faster, and then maybe the professors will come and will implement these things into university, make empirical things research-based, which are a lot of them already research-based, but just not maybe in a dental magazine. You maybe have to look deeper and go to Google Scholar, to be epic and i think the 20s are going to be the health decade and guys like us we make health fashionable again right yeah you know people want to feel better that's right you know and, and life's better when you you know you don't have to worry about health issues so you know i i think this is all coming you know to a head so you know it's great to see people with your expertise bringing this out to the you know and to be accessible as well dom thank you so much for your time you know i know you've got three boys and you know it, it really means a lot on the weekend to you know, carve that out so and you know the 
the other thing too is that that's definitely planned some more of these conversations um you know because there's there's a lot of people with questions out there so we we really need to kind of keep these these things yeah. moving i just have an, i just had an idea yeah thank you very much also for your time and of course i do this and to help spread we should kind of like start maybe doing some kind of a dental study group or like a wolf pack study group where we can really yeah accelerate this path and yeah push it even further and then of course all you guys help by sharing and moving this information and yes thank you very much and Thanks, and we'll put all the uh, the links in the show notes and to your book as well, um, Health Begins in the Mouth.